morning friends, it's Miss Kim. I have a story for us to read today called What Mess by Tom Lichtenhelm. All right, let's take a look. Look at this room, it's in such distress. You'd have to clean up just to call it a mess. The clutter and filth put our house in disgrace. What's the matter with you? Can't you clean up this place? Your stuff and your things are in such disarray. We just can't believe you live here this way. Your shoes in a pile, your shirts in a bunch. And there in that corner, is that yesterday's lunch? You take off your pants and you let them, you just let them fall. You throw dirty shirts and they stick to the wall. Your stinky old running shoes got up and ran. Outstunk by your underwear hung from the fan. Ew. <laughs> you used to think monsters hid under your bed. Now we think so too, but it smells like they're dead. And even though this one looks as strong as an ox, his fatal mistake was eating your socks. The clothing we bought at those fancy new stores now lies in a heap growing fungus and spores. While the custom-made closet we built for these garments has become a state refuge for vermin and varmints. There, there's lizards and lemurs and hideous hedgehogs, wombats and weasels and Brazilian tree frogs. I'm putting my foot down. This place is a zoo. What's this I stepped in? It feels like Nung Poo. Mm. For your birthday, we gave you these fancy new blocks, but you've cast them aside and just use the box. It houses some creature. It's hard to tell what we don't want to know, so please keep it shut. We'd like you to tell us, your mom and your dad, how it got in this state, how your room got this bad. We bought you the mop, we brought you the mop, the vacuum and broom. Now why, my dear child, won't you clean up this room? Mom, Dad, you don't understand. It's not random filth, everything's planned. The muck and the mess, the clothes that are cruddy, they all play a part in my homework and study. I've got math, I've got science. I've got all of those classes, not to mention a study of stinky shoe gases. The crud and the critters, they all play a part. And if it's not science, I just call it art. Those clothes aren't heaped up just because I'm a pig. I'm actually creating an archaeological dig. In a couple of years, I'll give you a chance to dig and discover my petrified pants. That isn't just vermin down under the rugs. I'm studying a family of misbehaved bugs. On my knees all day Tuesday, I've got a bad blister while watching a cockroach torment his young sister. Ew. And my underwear flung on the fan is, of course, just a method to study centrifugal force. <laughs> Oh, as they spin round and round, I can measure the flows of the air by the smells that I smell with my nose. Ew. Wouldn't recommend that. I'm not the first person with a closet of fur, but mine are alive. That's what they prefer. And while they're, all their doo-doo is nasty to noses, just wait till you see how it grows the roses. That food in the corner, all covered with green, will save you big money come next Halloween. What time, with time it will turn into stinky brown snacks, perfect for filling those trick-or-treat sacks. And finally, here's something of which I'm most proud, but cover your ears, this noise could be loud. It'll clear out your noses, if not the whole room, when I pour in the vinegar and watch it go... Boom! Oh.
although that experiment was really a blast, it cleaned out my room just a little too fast. Now all my pet projects have turned into debris and taught me a lesson from up in a tree. I'm done with excuses. It's time to confess that room was a pigsty, a big moldy mess. As soon as I locate the mop in the broom, I'll make an experiment of cleaning my room. The end. All right, friends, I'm sure some of us can relate to this, especially while we're in quarantine, stuck home. So hopefully you can take some time and maybe clean up your room today. All right, friends, stay well.